Steve. How are you doing, big man? Hey, I knew, I knew you would let me down. Didn't really give me much choice, did you? Yeah, all right, I know. I'm sorry about that, you know. I'm sorry if I came on a bit strong. But I just, I just really wanted to see a friendly face, that's all. Well, I could hardly have your suicide on my conscience, could I? <laughs> Why don't you say it like it is, Steve? Sorry, is this, uh, is this a bit friendly for you? <laughs> yeah, as it happens, yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of the lads in here, they're all right as far as thieves and con men go, but there's nothing beats seeing your old mates, does it? Well, it depends who that old mate is. Don't think I don't appreciate it, Steve, I do. So, uh, how's Michelle? How's the Rovers? Business good? You know, if you cared less about pubs, then you might not be in this mess. <sighs> why do you want to see him so badly, Peter? <laughs> I've told you why. So, business is okay, then. You're still doing that, uh, the wedding planning stuff, are you? Pete, you really think I believe you want to chat about how many peanuts or so? Because if you do, then you've really lost it. Well, I, I don't know why you, you seem I to mean think it, I have some Peter, sort of I will walk out of here right. unless you start telling me the truth. Okay. You've got one last chance. What do you want? It's not what I want, Steve. It's Jim. I'm doing this for your dad. Get me here. Made me think all sorts. I even thought that you were about to do something stupid. <laughs> me? Really? Something stupid? It's not funny. And even if he wasn't dead to me, how are me and my dad any of your business? Oh, come on, come on. You know what it's like in here, Steve. You... You cling to anything that's familiar, don't oh, you? Jim you McDonald. A bit like clinging to a stick of celery when your ship's going down. No, he's, he's not me a lot, actually. Oh, well, the mind boggles. I mean, how on earth has he got you to do his dirty work for him? I feel sorry for him, Steve. Why? Well, he said to me that he'd blown it with you. Mum, he'd blown it with Andy, and then most of all, he said that he'd blown it with you. And that is his biggest regret. He told me how close you two used to be. You know, look, Steve, all he wants to do is say that he's sorry. What well, I'm Just sorry, to say but sorry in, to... in case he's forgotten, he told me to do one. Forget he ever existed. Do you know what that's like? Maybe Simon would have an idea. You know, the bloke you spend your whole life looking up to, no matter how much of a tool he is, the bloke who taught you to fish, who lied to your mum when he caught you smoking in the shed. Doesn't matter how old you are, Peter, your dad tells you to get lost, it hurts. I'm, I'm sure that he never really he meant never, that. What, what, he never meant it. Oh, come on, Peter. It's too late. Tell him I'm glad he's found a friend, but he lost his son years ago. You sure about that, are you? I mean, you seem to say it so lightly he's dead to you. What if he really was, Steve? Do you think you'd feel OK about yourself rejecting a man who's desperate to make peace with his son? I know you, Steve. It would destroy you. He's saying he's ill. No. No. You see, you're relieved. Jim just wants to try and make things right. That's all, Steve. Why don't you just give him one last chance? Because he doesn't deserve one. Steve, do it. Why, well, you've still got time. There you are! Michelle! Yeah, I've only been gone a few hours. Yeah, well, we've been worried about you. <sighs> Probably for once you're right to. Why? What's Peter Barlow done now? What's happened? No, no, Peter's fine. Or as fine as an owl kid locked up on a murder rap can be. Well, so what was all the urgency for, then? Well, he's got me down to false pretenses. Acting on behalf of a ridiculous lump of an Irishman. Jim? <laughs> What's Peter playing at? Oh, well, them two. Bessie mates, apparently. And my dad's final wish, and don't worry, I don't mean he's dying, is to make amends. Well, it's to be up. They've got very big notebooks in jail, because that is going to be some list. Starting with the midwife he probably swore at the day we were born. Mm. Well, it's with me, I think, mainly. He wants to build bridges. What? From behind bars? Look, I'm just telling you what Peter told me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I've told Peter, tell that 
so-called father of mine to stick his amends in the Irish Sea. Hey, cut that man in two and he has selfish running right the way through him. Yeah, he's bang out of the order. <sighs> but why now? I mean, why not just write Steve a pathetic letter like normal prisoners do? Oh, no. He's up to something. Well, Steve's not going, is he? So whatever his little plan was has backfired, hasn't it? Ah. Steve might say he's not going, but don't you underestimate Jim McDonald when he wants something. I will not have him build up some fairy tale for Steve and then bring it crashing down. Not again. Do you have to see us at the same time? Because while we're both in here, there's no-one out there taking money. I wanted to talk to you both together. Well, I've had enough of talking. How about this? How about everybody stops talking? I've been on to the prison. Your dad really wants a visit. So he's going to get one. From me. No way. Listen, babe, if your mum feels that she wants... My to... mum's feelings have a habit of creating havoc. Almost as much as my dad. I've already told Peter it's never going to happen, so why do you have to get involved? Because someone needs to tell that man to his face. He lost this family years ago. Oh, you could just leave it. Or like he will. Just take no for an answer and happily go back to his crossword. Oh, you really don't know your dad, do you? Which is why I need to go. Lay this ghost to rest once and for all. Not too much, is it? I don't know. What impression do you want to make? Well, I, I don't want him to think I've made an effort, but I don't want to look dog rough either. Mm. Difficult balance, that. Maybe a bit less lippy. Or perhaps a more subtle shade. Mm. Yeah, that could work. Hold on a minute. Yep, yeah, yeah, try that one. Oh, it's hard. You're quiet. Not exactly my area of expertise. Are you sure about this? Oh, yes. I want to remind him what happened the last time he came crashing into our lives. And I'm not going to let him use Peter to worm his way back in again. Are you sure you don't want to see him? Yes, I'm sure. Well, difficult to understand the man wanted to see his son. You don't know my dad. You only get the one. Yeah, me and Andy got the booby prize. Yeah, well, I'll be all right on my own. I can handle myself. I hope you won't have to handle yourself. He's in prison for armed robbery. He's a very violent man. What, and you're happy to let your mum go on her own? I'm used to handling Jim. I've been doing it all my life. Maybe you should go. Look, I'll go if you want me to go. No, I don't. If you want to help, you can get me a cab. All right. Don't look so worried. I'll be fine. I'm not happy about this top. I think I'm going to change it. I'll just like get off to work. Look, you be careful, okay? I will. I'll see you later. You think I should go with her? I think you should trust your instincts. I haven't got an instinct, not on this one. And then I can't help you. We don't deserve it. Why don't go then? I won't. Anyway, the uh, camper van needs service, MOT, so... Right, we'll do that then. I will. Good. Right. Hey. Come in. <laughs> You're looking sharp there, Mr MacDonald. Ha! Behave yourself. Elizabeth's coming to see me. Liz? Yeah. Ah, oh, Jim, that, that, that's great. This is working out really well. So, tell me again, what exactly did Stephen say? Well, he didn't promise anything, OK? But I reckon deep down he wants to see you as much as you want to see him. You know, Liz coming as well, you, you must be really chuffed, mate. Oh, I am that. And, and seeing as I made all this happen for you, I was hoping that you might be able to help me out a little bit. But you haven't made anything happen yet, have you? Eh? Like I said, once I've seen my wife and my son, then you'll get your reward. Yeah, but if you could just let me have something now, you know, Jim, just, just take the edge off a bit. I've waited a long time for this, you know. It's not often you get second chances. And I'm happy that I could help. 
But come on, we all need help, don't we, Jim? I mean, me as much as you. Hold your horses, will you? What have I said? Right? If this goes well, then you'll get everything you ever wanted. That's fine, but... Patience is a virtue, or so they say. So you toddle off back your wee cell, right? Come and see me afterwards. Go on, then. Okay. I should have gone with her. Listen, your mum can look after herself, OK? Anyway, there's loads of guards. I'm sure they'll dive in if it looks like Jim's going to get seriously injured. Don't know, be funny. Are you really worried about this? Well, it's me dad, innit? One minute he doesn't want to know me, next minute he's tapping up Peter and sending out visiting orders. Just when you think you're out, he pulls you back in. Sorry. Hiya. Hi. Steve. Rob. Right, I am not leaving here until we have sorted out the music question. Yeah, listen, I'm not sure now's the right time. No, 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 I'm all right. I need to go and see uh, a man about me back anyway, isn't it? Right, come on then. Let's get started. Music. Hello, Elizabeth. Do you want to get a hug? Lipstick. Well, no sign of Steve then. He's not coming. Too busy. What do you want, Jim? Hey? Well, come on, Elizabeth. We've got a whole hour. Oh, I don't think I'm going to need that long. Well, I was hoping we could talk. I was actually hoping I could see my son. Will you leave him alone? He's getting on with his life. I don't want to see you. Just leave him. So is that why you've come here, to stop me seeing my son? Yeah, exactly that. Is that all? Actually, uh, I saw Ken Barlow earlier. Ken Barlow? <laughs> is he still alive? <laughs> no, sorry. Um, how's Deirdre? Well, I thought you'd know. See, now you're spending so much time with Peter. Oh, I know. You could have knocked me down with a feather. Peter Barlow in here? Do you know I'll tell you something, Elizabeth? I bet you that wee man's innocent, so he is. Oh, yeah. You're all innocent in here. Well, not all of us. Anyway, Ken asked if you'd keep an eye on Peter. <laughs> Ken Barlow wants a favour from me. Well, you can tell Ken that I'll look after Peter as if he was my own. I'm not sure that would make him feel much better. Come on, Elizabeth. Whatever I've done, I still love my two boys. Anyway, look, um, you see, Peter seemed to think that Stephen was keen to visit. Well, Peter got it wrong. So he doesn't want to see me at all? Can you blame him? Well, I'm still his father. Do you know what he said this morning? Oh. He said, you only get one dad. And Andy and him got the booby prize. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? You've got a short memory. Oh, I've got a very good memory. I can remember exactly what you were wearing on our first proper date together. You can stop that right now. I'm, I'm not saying that you and me didn't have some good times. The best times. And the worst times and all. You're still my family. You wrecked our lives. Me, Andy and Steve. Whatever I did, I never meant to do you any harm. Will you look? where you are now and ask yourself what you did to get here. Oh, I should never have look, come. No, 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 no. Look, just wait. Peter tells me that uh, you've got a new man in your life. My life is none of your business. Elizabeth, I just want you to be happy. Really? Then leave us alone. Never changed, do you? You came to see me. Don't look smug. Oh, come on, Elizabeth. There's always been something between us. These walls aren't going to stop that. I look at you now, 
And the only thing I feel is pity. No, well, fair enough. I'll take pity. Don't! I'll always have a place in your heart. No. Yes. Yes, Tri. <laughs> I'm under your skin. Oh, you're deranged. I'm the only sane person in here. You have not had one sane moment in your whole life. Well, if I'm mad, I'm mad because you drove me there. Oh, you are the most self-centered, irritating, selfish man I have ever met in my life. See, I love this. Oh, no. This is what we're good at, Elizabeth. No. Oh, yes. We have a spark. It's called real passion. Now, you tell me if you've got the same thing with your new man. My new man is worth ten of you. Now, who are you trying to convince? OK. That's it. Look at me, because I want to make sure you don't misunderstand any of this. I am really glad I came to see you today. Because it's reminded me that you have no part in my life or Steve's. You're here because you deserve to be here. On, no, you listen to me. You have done your best to ruin our lives. But that stops now. You can send as many letters and visiting orders as you want. But you will never, I repeat, never see either of us ever again. Oh, come on. Elizabeth, please. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Jim, settle down. All right, boss. Well, I just think that seems an awful lot for a string quartet. Well, there are four of them. Yeah, I know that. I know you do. Well, it didn't sound like it. It sounded like you were telling me how many people are in a string quartet. I was merely pointing out that if you're going to be paying for four musicians, it's always going to be more expensive, isn't it? Hmm. Right, well, how much for the harpist? 170. That's half of the string quartet. That's right. Well, unless my maths fail me, it should be a quarter. Well, you're probably paying for the harp. She doesn't have her own harp. Yes, of course she has her own harp. She's just got to organise transport for it, that's all. Well, how big is it? Pretty big. <sighs> well, I just don't think you're getting us the best deal here. I mean, I would be happy to swap the string quartet for the harpist, but only if she would take... one, two, five? Well, what if she had a smaller harp? Look, I thought you said that money was no object. Well, yeah, but we don't want to get ripped off. Right, OK, do you know what? I'll speak to the harpist, OK? She does do requests, by the way. She can play anything you want. How about Oasis? Yes, actually. I've heard her Wonderwall. It sends shivers down my spine. Bros, Robbie Williams. I can check. The prodigy. <laughs> yeah, leave that one with me. Right, OK, now. Back to the doves question. Yeah. Are you sure that you want doves? I mean, doves are romantic. Oh, are there any other birds we could have? Penguins? Hey, I once saw this magic act on TV where they used white tigers. Well, I can get you a close-up magician, you know, who goes around the guests and does tricks with cards and coins. Does he do anything with animals? Yeah, white rabbit out of a hat. Or... Hey, what if he had doves up his sleeves? She will have her doves. Leave it with me. She was looking down her nose at me. I've known Michelle since she was this high. She's a terrier. She'll get us the, the best deal on everything. This wedding is as important to her as it is to you. Boy, to us. What, to us. I'm telling you, she'll get a, a 20 grand wedding for 10. For seven. Nine. For eight. Done. I am so pleased I'm marrying you. Yeah, it's by the prodigy. Well, they were big in the 90s, yeah. Fire starter. I'm a fire starter. Twisted fire starter. No, it wasn't originally played on a harp. Hey, Jim. How did it go? You let me down, Peter, so you did. What? No, I didn't, didn't either of them turn up. Blizz came, no Steve. Oh, well, you know, that that's not so bad, Jim. I mean, come on, you know, that, that's not a bad strike, right? At least you got to see Liz. Steve might come next time, eh? Won't be a next time. No, you, you don't mean that. It's not my choice. What happened? I don't want to talk about it, so just get out. Just, just hang on. We had a deal. A deal? Yeah. <laughs> I really need a drink. You need a drink? Yeah. Do you think I give a monkey's what you need, son? I got Liz. 
I've to come in and see you, didn't I? I don't want to talk about it. Get out. Jim. Jim. Did you hear what I said? Did you not hear? I don't care about you. I never cared about you. I've lost my family. And right now, all I want to do is give someone a dig in the mouth. Do you catch my drift, Peter? No, you're not worth it. Listen, Jim. I know how you feel. And I think of everything I've lost, you know, everything I've thrown away. Is there anyone else, anyone else who can help me? Get out. I did everything you asked me, everything. Out. Jim. You heard. But did you ask him about Peter? Do you know what, Ken? If I were Peter, I would stay well away from Jim. All he ever does is cause trouble. So did he say anything about Steve? Oh, he said a lot of stuff. Nothing new, though. Just the same old poor me act. You OK? Me? I'm fine. Same arguments, same everything. And I won't go there again. I told him, none of us want anything to do with him. You sure? Oh, yeah. No visiting orders, no letters, no nothing. He is not going to mess with our heads ever again. How'd he take that? Frankly, Michelle, I don't care. I am not going to waste another second thinking about that man. Let me know when Tony comes in. Will do. I didn't know you played cricket. Medium fast, right arm over the wicket. Yeah, well, that means nothing to me. Well, you want to see me in my whites. Oh, yeah? Well, I like a bit of dressing up. <laughs> Better dig out my pads. <laughs> Watch the door. Peter? Peter? Hi. Come here, Peter. Come on, stay with me, son. Come here. Come on. Come on, Peter. Wake up. Come on, son. Wake up. Get a screw. Come on, Peter. Stay with me now. Come on. Will you get a screw now? Oh, you poor thing. Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Would you like a little treat? 
Oh, what is it? Yeah. Lasagna. Oh, you hey, has it got meat in it? Yes, yes I'm having that. a salad. Is that nice? How was your day, Ken? Pretty uneventful. How was yours? Yeah, pretty damn good, actually. We are well on the way to preparing our super spectacular wedding. Oh, <laughs> that sounds good. I'll get that. Eccles is really feeling sorry for herself, Hello? you know. But, Mum, we were talking about my wedding. Eccles is a dog. Yeah, but she's still part yeah. of the family. Yes, yeah, I just wish Campbell, she didn't right. have to wear that stupid lampshade. All the other dogs are laughing at her. <laughs> Dogs don't laugh. Well, they're giving us some funny looks. How do dogs give a funny look? Uh, I don't understand. When did this happen? It's a cocker spaniel making fun of Eccles's... And where is he now? They don't look like that. What do they look like, then? Well, all kind of haughty. Honestly. <laughs> Ken? Peter's in hospital. In hospital? What happened? He collapsed and they think it's alcohol poisoning. I must go and see him. Well, we'll come with you. He's in intensive care. Why are you looking so shocked? It's not the first time you've seen two people. I've seen it before. Just not in the back of my new camper van. Well, maybe they had nowhere else to go. Well, I've told him. I want the whole interior dry cleaning, disinfecting, fumigating. See, Tyrone's off for a few days, the whole thing goes to pot. They're just kids. Well, when I was their age... You did exactly the same thing. I did not. Oh, really? Shall we ask your mum? Times were different then. Times were different then? You're not that old. What? I flipping feel it sometimes. Are you still feeling bad because you didn't go with your mum? Don't know. Don't matter anyway, does it? You know, they sent him packing up put him away again in a little box. And you're all right with that? No, I think. I reckon that Luke should give me a free service and MOT. What he did in my van. Taking liberties. I mean, how did he get his hands on enough alcohol to do this? He's a very resourceful bloke, your brother. Please, Doctor, what could you tell us? Well, I'm afraid Peter is very seriously ill. You're aware he has a long history of alcohol abuse? Yes, yes, but will he get better? We've done everything we can for him. It's up to Peter now. All depends on how much fight he's got in him. Last thing Peter needs right now is another fight. If there's any change. Okay. Bye, Leanne. How was she? Well, I doubt she was crying down the phone. You know, if Peter dies, she'll get herself a pair of dancing shoes for his funeral. I doubt that. She cares too much about Simon. And we're trying to insulate him from all this as far as possible. Yeah, well, maybe it would be better if we prepared him for the worst. No! Peter's beaten the odds before. Even Bucky's run out of luck. Look, the sooner we looked on the positive side. Deirdre's finding it difficult as it is. Where is she? She's got one of her heads. I'm not surprised that she's feeling rough. She must have put away a bottle of red last night with her tea. Oh, like I say, all this is a terrible strain. She's desperately worried about Peter. Yeah, well, she'll be in the bed next to him if she's not careful. There are more bottles in our bin than there are next door. And I couldn't open the back gate for fag butts. She'll be fine as soon as Peter's out of the woods. If he gets out of the woods, oh, I could swing for him. <laughs> well, I'd definitely call that alternative therapy. Rob, if Peter dies, I reckon my dad won't be far behind. It will finish him. I, was I know it's nothing compared to Peter's situation, but I've been looking forward to it for weeks. What? For Richard, for poor at Rob, are you even listening to me? Yeah, it's that wedding fair, isn't it? Oh, no, babe, it's like the wedding fair. Over 300 stalls, everything from fire eaters to ice sculptors. <laughs> well, that's so they're not next door to each other, then. It's not funny. Oh, I wish I could do something for Peter. I mean, I really do. But all I can do is sit there, watching him breathe in and out. If you're lucky. Look, at least you'd be company for your dad. Yeah, well, he's hardly company for me, is he? Oh, will you come later? Yeah, yeah, look, I'd better catch my sister. 
Tell her about Peter. Why? She's not going to be popping over to plump up his pillows, is she? Well, not unless they're over his face at the time. She deserves to know. Hmm. Well, there must be another supplier. Well, how long then? No, that's completely unacceptable. No, 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 listen to me. No more lame excuses. Just get on with it, right? Flaming builders. Problems? Oh, no, it's just my work talks won't be ready for another month because apparently there's some strike in Italy. Honestly, by the time this place is ready, I'm going to need a stair lift. Well, you are a ringer for Thora Heard. Hey, watch it. I just need to be patient. Be patient, Carl. Everything will be all right. Worst things happen at sea, don't they? Yeah, look. I mean, what are my work tops next to the Titanic? Well, builders aside, you seem happier. I won't go that far, but yeah, I'm hanging on. How's life with you? She Barlow. Fine, yeah, wall to wall weddings. Mm. Hey, where do you stand on chocolate fountain? Oh, tacky. Unhygienic. There'll be all sorts in there, yeah, end of the night. Exactly what I thought. Right. Right. Do we really need to see who's on the man again? Whatever the buyer wants, eh? But I suppose some men must feel uncomfortable handling knickers in front of you. Mm, not in my experience. Far from it, some of them. Do you know, I've never really liked these. I mean, why don't they make them with a head on them? Because they're modelling bras and pants, not hats. I know, but it hardly creates a realistic picture, does it? I mean, the headless market must be pretty narrow. Mm, and easily pleased. They can't go complain about the designs, can they? Well, not that they could if they wanted to. I just think they look dead in my car. It's the faithless ones that freak me out. I had a dream once that there were hundreds of them chasing me through Kendall's. Oh, were they angry? Impossible to tell. Oh, yes, I suppose. Ah, nice of you to join us, Beth. I was starting to worry. Yeah? Your job, not you. What time do you call this? Sorry, I get held up. Held up? That was me thinking Dick Tep and we're dead. Why, Tracy, she was telling me about Peter. Peter? Peter Bowers. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. And what about him? You know, about being rushed into hospital. It's at death's door, apparently. Do raspberries change colour when they're crushed? What? If you crush a raspberry, does it change colour? Um, not that I'm aware. Well, it's just that they call this colour crushed raspberry. I mean, why not just call it, why not call it raspberry? I really don't know. I suppose they're using poetic licence. Yeah, well, there's nothing poetic about crushing a raspberry. Or any fruit, for that matter. It just makes a flaming mess. Look, if you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss this now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be taking this out on you. No, it's all right, Dad. I know it's hard. How did he get hold of alcohol inside a prison? Well, I've told you. You can get hold of anything if you want to enough. I never thought I'd say this, but thank heaven for Jim MacDonald. Jim? Yeah. Apparently he found him and raised the alarm. He saved his life. I only wish I could thank him in person. It's a fake and not a very good one at that. It's no use to me. Another satisfied customer? Well, I just told him the truth, but some people can't handle it, can they? Like me, you mean? You've heard, then? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Rob, I don't need protecting. Uh, look, it, it wasn't that. You you seem more like your old self, and I, well, I just didn't want it to set you back. Yeah, well, it has. Just when I think you can't touch me, that I'm free. You are. How bad is he? He might not make it, but that's his lookout. He, he's done this to himself, all of it. He is nothing to you anymore. Oh, look, Carly, you just need a bit of time. You need to put a... A bit of distance between yourself and everything that's happened. What, like go on holiday? Why not? Why not? Just get away from it all, literally. Get some perspective. I wish it was that simple. And plan B is what? Exactly. Look, you just need a bit of time and space to, to clear your head, to get him out of your system for good. I'd just be running away. So what? You have been collateral damage in Peter's life for long enough. You need to move on. And let's face it, by the time that you get back, well... It mightn't be an issue anymore. Simon's first day at Weatherfield High. And Leanne very kindly sent me a photograph of him in his uniform. <laughs> he looks so very grown up. Proud of 
Any change? Oh, yeah, he's perked up no end. But I was just asking. Why is there no seat? What am I supposed to do, perch on the end of the bed? Well, why don't you just jump in next to him and I've done with it? I'm entitled to sit down. I've been on my feet in the shop all morning. Peter. Peter, it's all right. It's all right. Peter, you're in hospital. I'm here. Carla. What? I'm to talk to Carla now. All right. All right, yeah, OK. I'll go and get her for you. Carla, please. Yes, OK. I'll, I'm going now. That's not a good idea. Sorry? Carla. Wait, he's put my sister through enough. She just wants to be left alone. No, I appreciate that. But, um, given Peter's situation, if he wants to speak to her, she must be given that opportunity. It's Carla's decision. She's gonna come. Why would she? To gloat. <laughs> She's past that. She's past all of this. She just wants to forget him. What? Catwalk starts in half an hour. In here? No! For richer, for poorer. Oh, right. Well, we both know which by the time they're finished with you. <laughs> you should go, though. But seriously, I mean, it, it's not like he's going to notice. No. I mean, I can't, can I? It's my brother. Oh, there's absolutely nothing you can do here. You might as well go and do something useful. I, I don't want to sound like he's, you know, but it's what he'd want. What do you reckon? Hmm? I'll go on then. I mean, I'll only be a couple of hours. I'll be back as soon as I can. Hey, Rob. Now, I know you don't like him or anything, but don't go unplugging him while I've gone. I don't want to be a prison widow. He had no intention of buying. He's just a time waster. Would have got more sense out of that thing, head or no head. Do you mind if I put this back out there? No, whatever. Uh, Ken's here to see the boss. Oh, well, you're not in the book. You need to make an appointment. Sorry. Go and make us a coffee, will you? Can't come in. Sorry to disturb you. I know you're busy. It's fine. I heard about Peter. I'm so sorry. It's very good of you in the circumstances. Well, I've got no beef with you or Deirdre, but do you want to sit down? No, no, no. I need to get back to the hospital. Uh, time may be against us, so I'll come to the point. Peter regained consciousness. That's good. Uh, he's still critical and, um... He's so anxious to see you. Look, Ken. I know you've got every reason not to see him, but he's desperate. He said he needs to talk to you. Yeah, but I don't need to talk to him, ever. Well, that's a choice you could be making, but it might be one you regret. You may not have much time. Yeah, well, like I say, I'm really sorry. But... Please. I'm sure he just wants to make his peace with you while he can. That as may be, Ken, but you know what? I've got through all this by the skin of my teeth. I appreciate how difficult no, this I is for you. No, I don't think you do. Because otherwise you wouldn't even ask this of me. This might be my son's last wish. How could I not? I wish I could do this for you, but I can't. I just... I can't. Hello. I'd like to book a holiday, please. Uh, somewhere warm, not really fussed where. As soon as possible. It's a funny old world, isn't it? Here's you about to check out, wondering what it's all been about, and who's sat next to you. The man you hate most in the world here to... to wave you off. 
the irony, eh? Well, except it's not ironic, it's... What's the word? Fitting, yeah. Dead fitting. Cos whatever's happened... Whatever I had to do... It's down to you, Peter. All of it. This whole flaming disaster start to finish. So I reckon it's only fair that you pay the price. And if you don't like it, you can argue the toss the next time you see us. Cos we're bound for the same place, me and you. And there's neither of us gonna need a coat. It just started fitting. What's happening? Anyway, what could he have to say that he hasn't already said? Well, nothing. And I tell you what, I don't need it. I don't need to pick over the bones of the sham of a marriage of mine. I, to relive everything again. It was hard enough going through it the first time. Good on you. You're a hard woman, Mother. Hey, it's called survival technique. Am I right? Yeah. I just worry that you might end up regretting it, you know, if you don't go, I mean. Are you serious? Well, I don't want anything bad to happen and then you're left wishing you'd gone. Nothing is going to happen to that man. I'll tell you what, if, he, if his parachute failed, he'd land on a bouncy castle. Peter Boller will survive just fine without me. Anyway, I'm not even going to be around, so... Well, you're not moving away. No, I've bought myself a last-minute package deal, you know, seven nights. Canaries, half board, can't wait. On your own? Yeah, on my own. Unless you fancy some sun and sangria. Well, actually... Well, actually what? No, listen, I'd love to, but Rob and Tracy's wedding's pretty much taken over my life, so... Was what I was going to say? Mm, yeah. Anyway, listen, I think it's a great idea. It's just what you need. Yeah. Oh, I need a taxi at half six. Is that all right, Steve? Yeah, sure. And Rob will be pleased with them. Well, that's what I want, a nice, happy cricket team. Are you still banging on about that flipping cricket match? Well, you won't be saying that when we get humiliated by that shower at the Flying Horse. This rate, we're going to have Emily, wicket keeper, and Norris at Silly Mid On. I am saying now. Ugh. Chesney. Youth. Athleticism. Hold the fort, Mother. I'm going to go and rally the troops. No, hang on. Y you're supposed to... Hi, Ken. How's Peter? Oh, uh, wish I could tell it was good news. Oh. Sorry. It must be a terrible worry for you. Yeah, well, seems like that's a parent's lot. Well, if there's anything I can uh, do... Sorry, it's the hospital. Hello? Yeah, speaking. Is everything all right? It's Peter. Was anyone with him? Oh, thank you. Bye. It seems he's had a... I don't know, a seizure or something. Did they say? Just that it was very serious. OK, if you'll excuse me. I'll... No, of course, you go. I hope he's... I hope everything's OK. No, not really. They, they flew in and it was mayhem. There was people everywhere, wires, tubes. I've, I've had to come and wait out here. Yeah, but what happened? Well, from, from what I could tell, there was, there was a lot of bleeding. I've, I've got to go and see no, it. Ken, you can't. Look, the, the nurse said that she'd come and talk to us when they know what's going on. Where's Tracy? Oh, she, she just had to pop out. Have you found her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's on her way. But, 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 why don't you take a seat and I'll, uh, I'll get you a cup of tea? But they did say he was going to be all right, didn't Ken, they? Ken, you're going to have to wait and speak to the doctor, no. all right? No, please don't tell me I'm too late. What? Oh, no, no, no. Peter's at death's door and you've been gallivanting around a wedding fair. Oh, yeah, that's right. Blame me. I did well, not know this was going to happen. Let's just calm down, yeah? We're, we're all worried. <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. just want you there to hold her hand, do you know yeah. what I mean? Picking venues and booking entertainment, that kind of thing. And then other people, <laughs> like Tracy, well, being honest, she doesn't even fall into other people, does she? I mean, she's a category on her own, that one. Hey, tell her about the harpist. Oh, you are joking. No, I'm not joking. I'm auditioning three tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> nice to know someone's happy. Come here. Mm -hmm. 
Right, right for me and our Jace, Tyrone. Orange juice, thanks. He can't drink with these pills he's on. How about you, love? Oh, yeah, I'll have a pint. Ah. You fancy game time? Oh, sorry, mate. Oh, poor you. Hey, I think I've got some of Jack's dominoes under here somewhere, if you fancy it. Oh, no, Liz, you're all right. Cheers, love. All right. I think he's scared I might thrash him. Oh, yeah? Big dominoes player, are you? No, but I'll give it a go. All right, come on, then. I think I can remember how to play it. Come on. Jack taught him. He never loses. <laughs> I think you need it. <laughs> you okay? Suppose you've heard about Peter. Look, it's whatever it is I'm not interested in, right? Yeah, fair enough. Um, I've just heard he's taking a turn for the worse. Um, sounds like he might not make it. That's too bad. You take care, right? I will. Mm. Bye. Bye, love. Just hope she's doing the right thing. Well, she's fooling no one with that front she puts on. But I reckon she's right to just go. Yeah, but like I said, a thousand pounds... is a reasonable offer. Hey, you should hear him when he's being unreasonable. <laughs> it's just that... Well, with Tyrone not being able to work, all I'm really talking about is enough to cover loss of earnings. I'm not talking about compensation or anything like that. Only what's fair. I think it is fair. Seriously, if we could offer more, we would. Liz, put the round when you're ready, love. Right, you are, love. Um, not for me, Tar Jace. Oh, go on, Fizz, just have a you, you know. Y yeah, go on then. Yeah, uh, and an orange juice for a tie as well, please. Okay. Just give them what they deserve, eh? Don't panic. I'm not panicking. I just believe in being straight with people. And you know as well as I do, if they find out about the materials, it's going to cost us a fortune. Yeah, but they're not going to, are they? You two look like you're up to no good. Let's face it, you only fancy me because there's always a danger in my thing. <laughs> oh, we only going for a week. Well, I cleared out the cabin of every magazine they had, I reckon. It's either that or, you know, be the crazy lady who starts talking to herself. Look, you'll be fine once you get there. It's exactly what you need, this. No, what I need is to wake up and find out that this was all just a dream, but that's it's not going to happen, is it? Shall we get it coming? I was wrong with using to see him. Peter? Yes, Steve Peter. Who else? I don't know. Well, I'm asking. Look, I can't tell you what to do. All I know is when it comes to making big decisions, there's been times in my life when I've ignored everybody because I thought I knew what was best for me. But, you know, sometimes you can't see the wood for the trees. About Simon. I hate to think how he's going to take it if anything should happen with a bit. It won't. The kids are tough. Rob's right. Mr. Bowler. Yes, yes, how is he? Still in a critical condition, I'm afraid. But the good news is he has stabilised. Oh, really? That's good. Oh, but I thought that. Oh, I was sure I was going to lose him. So are you saying that he's going to pull through? He's not out of the woods yet, but let's just say it's a move in the right direction. I suggest you go and get some rest. If there are any developments, we'll call, OK? I'm sorry. sorry. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Night. Come on, Dad. You look shattered. Getting some jealous. But it's still boiling in the canaries. Just going to be lying there, relaxing by the pool. Nice food and drink. Yeah, but if it was me and you, then you'd have me to rub on all your lotion. 
Hispania and whack away the mozzies. Mary she'll just have like a case full of books. Mm. Do not mean magazines. I was making a point. She'll come back knowing about all next year's strappy sandals, whereas we, you know, would have them. Hey, Chesney, how'd you get on? Uh, uh, he's got to check his work motor. Oh. Quite a lot of police. Coming up. But never fear, I reckon I can get you to put your name down on the cricket list. What? Oh, sorry, mate, I'm not really sort of into that thing. Oh, come on, it'd be good. Plus, you'd be the youngest, fittest player out there. Sorry, sport's just not really my thing. Really? Mm. Now, that is really weird, because I could have sworn that somebody told me that you'd had a football trial or something. Oh, yes. Weatherfield FC, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but that was before my injury, me. <clears throat> Tell you, you should try. Our Steph, she used to be captain of school round us, team. She's wicked. Pass your final daughter in. Uh, just as long as these cricket ladies are the only numbers that you have got in that phone, all right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Ken. Bye. Ken, um, sorry to hear about me. Oh, yeah. And... What would you like to drink? On the house, of oh. course. Thank you, Liz. I'll have a red wine, please. Did, um, did Carla get away all right? Yeah, yeah. Steve drove her to the airport, didn't Steve? Yeah, Terminal 1, fastest time ever. <laughs> anyway, how is he? Stable. Oh, well, that's encouraging. Then no pint and no red wine, so. Yeah, I can only imagine if Jim hadn't raised the alarm. Jim? Your dad? Mm. Oh, yeah. According to the prison, he's a bit of a hero. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, if he hadn't been there and acted so quickly, I mean, could have lost Peter. Jim, doing something for somebody else. I'm speechless. Look, I didn't say anything before, but uh, according to Peter, he really wants to see you. Yeah, well. Look, I know there are issues, but uh, I think everyone deserves a second chance, Steve. Okay. Oh, and uh, sit in the catalogue, yeah? Yeah, okay. Carlo? What are you doing here? You thought you'd gone on holiday. Yeah, I couldn't go. Yeah, well, if I'm honest, it did seem a bit heartless, even for you. Been shopping, have we? Oh. You, you're being ridiculous. Listen, what time's your flight? I'll, I'll drive you back to the airport. Robert, I'm not going in, that's fine. Enough. Nothing good is going to come from you sticking around, dearies. He's not even conscious. Yes, I know that. I've just been to the hospital. Oh, great. And he was doing so well. Drop it, Trace. Did you, um... Was he conscious? No, I'm going to go back first thing. Thank you. Good night, Carla. Good night. What do you suppose is going to happen, eh? If he does pull through, then... He's still going to be the same lying, cheating murderer that he was before. I know that. But you cannot do this to yourself to help someone like him. I'm not doing it for him. I'm doing it for me. Look, I stood in that airport and all I could think of was what you were saying before about him not being here when I got back. And that's always going to be up here, isn't it? Always wondering what he had to tell me. So I'm not back for him. Closure, that's what I've come back for. But I'll, I'll talk to you in the morning. Bum, as requested. Ta, how was Carla? Uh. Hey, Rob, do you know what this song is? It goes, la, 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 la. It was in an advert with a big plane. Hey, I was hoping we could walk down the aisle to it. I don't know it. Yes, you do. It's classical. You know, maybe if I sing a bit more. Please. Uh, yes, OK. I wish there was an app where you could just sing at it and then it would tell you what the song was. Well, there is. Yes, thank is you. Is it really? Thank you very much. Maybe the Bye. harpist will know. Well, I was hoping the harpist would play it. Right. Anyone interested in a Peter update? I've just spoken to the hospital. Yeah, yeah. How is he? Well, the main thing is his condition hasn't worsened. Well, that's good. And? Touch wood. Carla's with it could give him the boost that he needs. Well, I'm glad I'm not the one at the hospital when Carla comes knocking. Is he is he up to talking, though? I mean, he, he can say stuff, right? Uh, intermittently, yeah, but it takes a lot out of him. What were you saying earlier about harp? Yeah, I'm auditioning a few later. Hey, Dad, maybe you know what this song is. It goes, la, 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 la. The flower duet. 
Are you really that crass and insensitive? Oh, what? Is it a funeral song? That is so typical of me. You're still planning your wedding and we nearly lost Peter last night. Look, Dad, I know you're upset. But... You need to cancel or at the very least postpone. Oh, can't this family have one positive thing to look forward to? Just one thing? Maybe your dad's got a point. Oh, he's definitely got a point. Oh, you're kidding me. It is completely inappropriate. Well, when is going to be appropriate? When he lives, when he dies? What? <laughs> Look, you should let Michelle know. Tracy, do it. Have you been yet? Just on the way. I don't know what I'm going to say to him, like. Well, I'm just about to go and see Michelle. Tell her the wedding's off. Why? Well, apparently it's, um, it's inappropriate. You know, with Peter being so ill, according to my dad. I don't really like you, Tracy, you know, no offence. No, it's all right. The feeling's mutual. I'll tell you this for nothing, though. Don't let that, that man and his selfishness destroy your life like it's destroyed mine. Oh, Peter? Mm-hmm. Don't let them get in the way of your happiness. So the internal bleeding is under control at the moment. Sorry, I'm not very good at all this. I really appreciate you coming. came for Ken, it's what he wanted. That's fair enough. And if you think this means I care about you, be deluded, I don't. Well, I know you hate me. Good, you're not as daft as I thought then. And I don't blame you. And I know what you're hoping for. What? That'll get all emotional. Sorry for your lying here, looking all hopeless. And... I don't want your sympathy. I just wanted to see you one last time. That's all. Just how low can you stoop? I know. Why 
why you did it. Uh, Peter, stop this. Talk about kicking me when I'm down. I understand. Do you know how hard it was for me to come here today? Hey? Peter. Oh, that's right, you fall asleep. That's your answer to everything in oblivion. There's a doggy to put him down. Of you? Yeah, she's head and shoulders above the rest. She's all right. It's just, well, the eights is phoned. They'd like the dress back. I, I'm, I'm really sorry, Winona. This won't take long. Oh, well, if they were giving Olympic medals for rudeness, you'd win gold every time you, wouldn't you? Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> You've been crying, Tracy. No. Look, I'm hard faced, don't you know? Oh, you're preaching to the converted love, but even wicked witches have an off day. You know that harpist? Winona. She was brilliant. Yeah, I know she was. I mean, she was amazing. And with a bit of a makeover, she wouldn't have ruined the DVD. But what is the point in hiring anybody when the wedding's off? You are? Joking. Better up be. What's happened? Oh, don't tell me. Has Rob finally come to his senses? You're not funny, Liz. I wasn't trying to be. No, it's not <sighs> Rob, it's my dad. Why has he come to his senses? No! No, he just feels that it would be insensitive to carry on with things, you know, in light of Peter's situation. Well, I suppose he has got a point. Has he? I think he thinks that I don't care. Do you? Listen, there's not many people in this world that I give a stuff about, but Peter is one of them. I just thought that it would bring a bit of happiness to the whole family at a really difficult time. Well, yeah, something positive to focus on, isn't it? Yeah, well, you try telling my dad that. Well, no, actually, I think you should. You know, point it out to him. He's, he's probably just so worried about Peter. He's not thinking straight. Yeah, well, I've tried. Well, so try again. Well, it's worth a shot, isn't it, before you start chucking all your plans away? Have you heard from Carla? She's not replying to her text. I hope she's all right. <laughs> really get into your poetry, don't you? Ken! Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, did you say something? Well, I, I said you, you enjoy that, don't you? Yeah. Yes, it's, uh, it's cathartic. You know, sometimes I don't know how I feel about something until I write about it. Does that sound terribly pretentious? Oh, take that as a yes, then. Oh, come on, Carla, reply. I think I might take this upstairs. Ah, oh, Tracy. Now you're both here. Uh, I'd just like to say how much I appreciate you cancelling the wedding. I mean, I know how much you were looking forward to it, but uh, I do think it's really for the best. <laughs> Actually, um... I didn't cancel it. I was going to. But Michelle agreed we should give this family something to be happy and positive about. Of course she's going to say that. She's said to make money out of us. Do you know, sometimes I think people forget that Peter's my brother. What, people? What, you mean me? No. I mean William Wordsworth up there. Look, I am worried about him too. And I will cancel the wedding if it gets worse. If he gets much worse, he'll peg it. Yeah, but what happens if he pulls through? What if he makes a miraculous recovery? And we're just sat here twiddling our thumbs, not wanting to crack a smile in case it sets him back. That doesn't seem fair, does it? Eh? All our plans going to waste? Well, I suppose, yeah. Well, if you want to face the wrath of Ken... No, there is no point upsetting him. I'm not going to tell him. Or not yet. 
And you won't either. Everything all right? There's something happened at the hospital. How is he? Um, can we go somewhere to talk more private? Yeah, yeah, come through to the back. Awful. He's had a transfusion or something. I can tell me I've forgotten, but. But what? He woke up. He talked to me. Listen, <coughs> if he has upset you or hurt you. No, it's nothing like that. I thought he was messing with my head. But you know, the longer I think about it. Yeah, well, I wouldn't put anything past that man. Even on his deathbed shell. So what did he say? He said he'd cover for me. He said he'd take my secret to his grave. I can't even believe him saying this. What secret? He thinks I killed Tina. What? He's convinced, I mean convinced, that I did it. So, so that means he didn't. Oh my God. I know, I know what. But. If you didn't kill her and he didn't, then... Who the hell did? Exactly. <laughs>